In today's Photoshop lesson, we want to take a look at layer styles and see how they can be used to make a digital picture frame for our photo. That would be this thing right here, the digital picture frame. So let's start off, we'll get a regular photo that needs a frame. Here we go. First thing we want to do is unlock the background layer. The easiest way to do it is just to click on the lock. The next thing we need to do is add some canvas size to this photo so we have room for the photo, I mean for the frame and the the mat. So we're going to go image, canvas size right here. We'll click on that and now we can see we have a 14 inch photo. We want two inches on each side so we're going to need to add four inches. The easiest way to do that I think is just use the relative box, check that relative box and type in four in each one of these bo uh, width and height that'll give us an additional two inches on each side and there we go now we have the two inches on each side I'm gonna hold the space bar down move this over just a little bit okay the next thing we're gonna do is add a new layer but we're gonna add this layer below the current layer so I'm gonna hold the control key down that would be command on a Mac and I'm going to click on the new layer icon. So control click and bump. There's the new layer right there below the layer zero. Now it's time to fill that layer with white. So we'll go edit. We'll go down here where we see fill and we'll choose white. There are other choices in here, but white's the one we want. We'll just say OK. Now we have a photo. I mean, a photo with looks like it has a mat around it. Then we're going to add the frame right now. And this is where we use layer styles to make the frame and the mat. So I'm going to double click right here in this area. When I double click here, that brings up the layer styles dialog box. And the first thing we're going to add to this is a stroke. So I'm going to click in this area right here, right here, and that brings up um, some choices we have and this particular stroke is okay it's 76 pixels it's about right um, you can see you can make it bigger or smaller but that 76 looks good we want to go inside blending mode normal 100 percent colors black we're all good on that the next thing we want to do is add a bevel and a boss so I'm going to click right in this area right here and now we have the bevel and emboss. Okay. Now this has to be the same size as the stroke. If you notice, if the if the bevel and bo it was 76, we want this to be 76 because that's how big our stroke was. If it's smaller, it um, hangs. If it's smaller, it looks like this, kind of a little short. You can see it kind of gives you an effect, but I'm not sure that's what we're looking for. So we made the stroke 76. Um, the style would be inner bevel. You have a couple choices. Stick with the inner bevel. That gives you uh, this look and the hard chisel. We have choices there too. The hard chisel gives you these edges. Now, what you're going to do is move around these sliders to get this edge. Sometimes it doesn't look the same. Like if the depth is at a different number, you can see that will change the look of it. Another thing you can change is this angle over here you're gonna get a different look you can see now the other side is lighter where was this over here 240 76 and then you can have a highlight mode white I change this uh, shadow mode to from pure black to just a little bit lighter so and that works good too so now we have this frame that kinda looks like a frame we need to put a little edge on the inside of this frame kind of like give it a little shadow I'm gonna hit the inner glow to do that and um, opacity 47 no noise that's good black is about right you all see that little shadow that's there now you get that by moving these these sliders around now if it's too small it'll be underneath the frame you won't see it so that's no good in this case the 98 did about right and the choke seems to be what like sharpens the edges of it a little bit. That's a little too much, but 
I'm going to keep that at 80. And this, I didn't mess with that. So anyway, we just have that little bit of an edge around it, a little shadow edge. And now we want to change the color from white. So we're going to click on the cover o color overlay. I'm going to click right there. And here's the color. It's kind of a yellowy color, tan. If you like, you can pick any color you want. You can pick any color out of the rainbow. Uh, you can even pick colors out of the, the picture. Here's a green. You could have picked that out of the photo. Or you could pick the blue of the sky. Whatever color you want, that can be your matte color. color. I'm going to stick with that tan color that we had. I'll just say OK. And now we have a color overlay and that gave us some color to our mat. And to finish the mat we're going to have to put a pattern on it. So I'm going to click right here and that put a pattern on it. The pattern I chose was uh, raw linen. It kind of gave it a weave pattern. Kind of looks pretty good. Um, if you don't have any many patterns to pick from then you need to actually click on this, go to this gear icon, and you can load all these different patterns right down in here. There's all kinds of patterns if you don't have them. It doesn't load them automatically. You, sometimes you have to load them yourself. So we're good there. The only thing I really got to show you here is the blending mode, luminosity. Just use one of the darkening modes, and luminosity works good too. And the opacity is how how much you want it to show and then the scale of course is how big you want the pattern to look on the screen now I moved it up to 400 percent if you like that then that's good to go okay we are good to go we have the, the mat and the frame and with a little shadow around it and we'll say okay to that now let's do the same thing to the picture by the way let's go ahead and rename this I'm gonna double click on that layer zero and type in photo that'll remind us that that's that's a photo and I think I'll double click on this layer to rename it and I'm, I'll name that um, frame and mat so now I know kinda which one's which if I want to change the colors and something else later now we'll go ahead now we'll go ahead and do put an edge on the photo. I'm going to double click like we did before right in this area. First thing we're going to click on is stroke. Okay, there's a stroke. Now if I move this out of the way you can see the stroke is 76 pixels. A uh, little bigger than I think we need. So I'm going to move that stroke down to a smaller size. Maybe about this big, 16. Let's go 15. Uh, right in there. I'm using the down arrow key to get real exact settings. Let's go with 14. Okay, inside, blending mode normal. That's all good. And the color, not black. That would be a black core. Let's have a white core. I'm going to go kind of in this gray color. We'll say okay. Opacity is 100. That's good. Color, we're good. Next thing we want to do is add that inner shadow. We're going to click here. And that'll give us just a little edge around there. I don't see one. Let me increase the distance a little bit. Um, there it is. It's starting to come through now. That'll give us just a little shadow. Let's bring it in from about 45 degrees. That'll give that edge just a little bit of a realistic look. And I'm going to add an inner glow. The inner glow is too much, but it's just going to go around the whole photo and I'm going to make the uh, size of it a lot smaller. So just a little, I'm trying to go down a little at a time. There, that gives us that little little edge that I think is going to help. And finally, we'll go to bevel and boss like we did before. Now the 76 pixels is too big. How big was our thing? Was it 14? And now look, the edges have that little, little bevel and boss look to them. We basically use the same settings as we had before, the inner bevel, the hard chisel, and depth is 240, and that looks pretty good. So let's go with that. Okay, we'll click on OK. And now we're pretty well good to go. I'm going to move this over maybe. There we go move it over and there's our photo frame all 
looking pretty. If we want to change the color of the frame or anything, all you have to do is click on Color Overlay. Because remember, that's the frame in the mat. So I'm going to double click on the Overlay button. Up comes uh, the color. I can change any color. I can pick something out of the... Uh, the green if I wanted to. I can pick that out of the picture itself. I can click on OK. I'll show you one more thing before we go. If you want to go crazy with the mat, you can turn off the color overlay, turn on the gradient overlay, and we'll click over in this area and look at this gradient. It's kind of a... Oh, I didn't want to show you that. I did want to show you this, that we have all these gradients to pick from. And here's kind of a blue-gray gradient that looks nice. So that looks good. And we can also, let me cancel all of that, put, set this on an angle. If I rotate that a little bit, it'll be kind of coming in from the side. So, And if I want to scale it, if I don't like the shadow here, I can move the scale up, and it should take that shadow away. So. Isn't that crazy? And if it's too much or too little, you can actually change the opacity of it. There's the lower opacity, and there's a higher opacity. Okay. And before I go, I got one more thing to show you. We'll just say OK to this. Um, when I was making one of these, I went ahead and recorded an action. And that's something I'll cover in another 10-minute tip. But let me bring up a blank photo. Let me bring over the action palette. I call it matte and frame. And if I click on the play button right here, it'll go ahead and do all the work we just did. And this is how long it's going to take to do all that work. Oh, that was quick. That sure beats doing it step at a time. And there's all my uh, layer effects. And all I have to do is click on any one of those if I want to change it. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.